So today in this lecture we are going to discuss the structure of the capillary wall. Structure of the capillary wall. Now we have started our new series of lectures about the microcirculation and lymphatic systems. We have already discussed structure of the microcirculation and capillary system. We have discussed how the capillaries are made from the dividing blood vessels, how the aorta divide to make the large arteries, how the arteries divide uh, repeatedly to make the arteriole, then how the arteriole divide repeatedly to finally make the capillary. And we discussed that it is at the level of the capillaries that the exchange of nutrients uh, between the tissues occur. The nutrient uh, goes into the tissue and the excreta or the waste material of the tissue goes into the blood at the level of capillaries and that is known as basically the microcirculation and all of this is occurring at the level of capillary system and for this important function to occur the the capillary wall the capillary wall this is basically the capillary wall which has been enlarged over here and this is specially designed uh, and so that's why it is important to discuss the structure of capillary wall now let's talk about the structure of capillary wall the capillary wall is basically composed of a unicellular layer of endothelial cells and is surrounded by thin basement membrane. So here, here we have the capillary and here in the capillary we have enlarged just one wall. This is the whole of the capillary over here. And we have just enlarged this one wall, one wall of the capillary and it is important to discuss this capillary wall because it helps in the diffusion of nutrients the ions and salute and it helps in the diffusion of excreta the waste material so it is basically this wall is basically made of unicellular layer of endothelial cells this is basically made of endothelial cells and it is this these are endothelial cells this is one endothelial cell this is another endothelial cell and here is another endothelial cells and these endothelial cells are basically surrounded by a basement membrane now this basically black color is showing the basement membrane so the capillary wall it is made of unicellular layer a layer of just one cell there we do not have another cell over here this is just a layer of one cell a unicellular layer of endothelial cells endothelial cells are placed uh, side by side and a layer is formed and they are basically lying on the basement membrane now the thickness of this wall is about 0 0.5 micrometer and the diameter of the capillary is 4 to 9 micrometer the thickness of this capillary wall is around 0 0.5 micrometer. This thickness, this is thickness of one wall. This is 0 0.5 micrometer. And the whole diameter, this inside diameter, this red color. This diameter is about 4 to 9 micrometer. Now this 4 to 9 micrometer is sufficient to allow just one red blood cell. This just one red blood cell can move in this this is so small that only one cell can move and the endothelial cells basically at the point of attachment of these endothelial cells we have intercellular cleft intercellular cleft it is basically a thin slit curving channel between adjacent endothelial cells so it is a curving thin slit it is a curving thin slit and between these slits we have some proteins as well which helps in the anchoring or the attachment of the endothelial cells but this cleft or pore basically helps in the diffusion of water molecules and ions and salute and this is basically known as the intercellular cleft this is the intercellular cleft and it is formed it is present between Two adjacent endothelial cells so the capillary wall is basically made of a unicellular layer of endothelial cells that are laying on the basement membrane and their thickness is 0 0.5 micrometer and the diameter the diameter here is 
4 to 9 micrometer. Now the, 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 dis, the space between two adjacent endothelial cells is known as the intercellular cleft also known as slit pores. These cleft, these intercellular cleft also known as slit pores, they make about 1 by 1000. This make about 1 by 1000 of a total surface area of capillary wall and allow diffusion of water soluble ions and small solutes. The whole area of this place of this intercellular cleft or pore is about 1 by 1000 of this whole capillary wall. It is because this cleft or this pore is just present on one side of the endothelial cell. So the, the, the total area, the total surface area is about 1 by 1000 of the whole capillary wall. This is a very small area. But even this small area, which only constitute about one by thousand of the whole capillary wall, this is sufficient to allow the diffusion of water molecule, ions and soluble solute. Inside the endothelial cells, we also have plasma lamell vesicles. Plasma lamell vesicles. These. These are basically plasma lamell vesicles. And these plasma lamell vesicles are basically the fluid that are coming inside the cell that is basically imbibed from the outside the cell. They move in the cell and go outside or they are imbibed from this side and they go through this cell and go out in, in, into, the, uh, into the capillary. So these vesicles basically which are fluids or solute that have been imbibed from the extracellular fluid or intracellular fluid, they are known as plasma lamell vesicles. And when they combine together, these this vesicle, when combined with other vesicle and another vesicle and another vesicle, they can make vesicular channel. They can make vesicular channel. So plasma lamell vesicles form at the surface by imbibing small packets of plasma or extracellular fluid, they combine and make the vesicular channel. So that's the gross structure of the capillary wall. It is basically a unicellular layer of endothelial cells lying on a basement membrane. The thickness is 0 0.5 micrometer and diameter inside the capillary is 4 to 9 micrometer, only sufficient to allow a single red blood cell to move at a time. The channels, the intercellular cleft are spaces between two adjacent cells. This, these intercellular cleft, also known as pores, basically make about one by thousand of the total surface area of capillary wall. They basically allow the movement, the diffusion of water soluble ions and small solute. So the circulation of ions, the, the, the diffusion of the sol water soluble solute, the ions and the water molecule to the tissue and the excreta from the tissue into the blood vessel, it is basically occurring through this intercellular cleft or the slit pores. Then uh, we have the uh, plasma lamell vesicles as well because some, uh, some portion of the membrane is imbibing a solute or uh, from the plasma and this solute basically uh, this packet then move through the cell and go on the opposite side and when these vesicles combine together they make basically vesicular channels so the the purpose the whole purpose of discussing the structure of the capillary wall is to describe how this capillary wall is basically helping in the diffusion of the water uh, ions and solute towards the uh, towards the tissue and the removal of the waste material from the tissue into the blood and the two main mechanisms for the diffusions are the intercellular cleft and the vesicular channel which are here which are basically formed by the combination of different plasma lamell vesicle now this uh, this capillary wall the capillary wall is varying in different organs for example E pores of each organ has special characteristics. For example, in the brain, in the brain, 
these pores are so much tight they are known as tight junction they do, they allow only small water molecule carbon dioxide and oxygen to move in the brain in the liver these intracellular clefts are so much large that they allow movement of large molecule like proteins as well but in the git the gastrointestinal system the these intracellular clefts are midway somewhere between the intracellular clefts of the muscle and intracellular clefts of the liver now in the kidneys the intracellular cleft basically allow the filtration process which will allow some of the water molecule to move out of the glomerulus into the uh, bowman's capsule and will not allow other substances so this this intracellular cleft also known as the slit pore is basically uh, behaving differently in the brain it is behaving differently in the liver it is behaving differently in the git and in the kidney so the pores of each organ has basically special characteristics so that's all about the structure of capillary wall to summarize again the capillary wall is basically composed of unicellular layer of endothelial cells that is surrounded by a basement membrane the thickness is about 0.5 micrometer and the diameter of the whole capillary is basically 4 to 9 micrometer only sufficient to allow a movement of single red blood cell at a time there are intercellular cleft that are basically thin slit curving channel between adjacent endothelial cells and the whole area of these intercellular cleft is about 1 by 1000 of the total surface area of the capillary wall and these cleft with the help of plasma lamellar uh, vesicles and vesicular channel basically allow the movement of uh, water solute ions uh, from the tissues into the capillaries and from the capillaries into the tissues and the behavior of this intercellular cleft or pores pores is basically different in brain liver kidney and muscles so that's all about the structure of capillary wall thanks a lot for watching the video